What's going on guys, this is Rob, and if you're enjoying the content here on my channel, then make sure you hit the like button, and make sure you hit subscribe so you can help decide what direction the content on my channel goes in, in the foreseeable future. Okay, so after reading the free comic book day release of Secret Empire, I can almost guarantee you guys there's going to be so much backlash and there's going to be a lot of resurgence in this argument that Hydra is the same thing as the Nazis. And so um, I've been I've been seeing this argument. A lot of people have been asking me to address it, but I've been seeing this argument a lot. And there's been a lot of different uh, comic book news companies that have basically been sort of uh, peddling misinformation. And so what we're going to do is we are going to uh, rectify that and we're actually going to cite sources. We're going to reference what it is that we're talking about uh, so you guys have an idea of what we're coming from. And, and what things are about. So to give ourselves a baseline here, we're going to sort of run over the Nazis in Marvel Comics. Now, the Nazis in Marvel are exactly what you would expect them to be, but the issue is that their history has kind of waxed and waned over the years. The most recent uh, indication of what the Nazi party was about really came with Ed Brubaker's run of Captain America, at least that was the most in-depth explanation about the Nazis. And for the most part, the Nazis are exactly what we think they are. I mean, they're basically a political party that's based out of Germany, rose to prominence in the anti-Semitic nature of Germany at the time, following the signing of the treaty of Versailles and the near collapse of the uh, of the country in terms of its of its economy and uh, and the result was that it intended to initiate a nationwide and eventual worldwide police state uh, all the while suspending things like freedom of speech and freedom of the press and freedom of assembly and so on and so forth basically a, a fascist state as we tend to think of it now in terms of Hydra because that's really all there is about the Nazis I mean you had like Adolf Hitler who was running the show you had the Red Skull who was a second in command and you had a few people here and there like uh, like Baron Strucker but Baron von Strucker actually will, will be a little bit more prominent here in a second. The, the idea of Hydra dates all the way back to the earliest days of humanity. Now, we're not given a whole lot of information here. We're only really given a timeline in Secret Warriors number two by Brian Michael Bendis and, uh, and Jonathan Hickman. But what we know is that somewhere along the line, uh, there was a cabal that basically arrived on Earth for the purpose of creating a, an evil society in and of itself. And at the time, at least as it was established in, uh, in Wolverine volume three, issue number 29, I think, this cabal had basically corrupted a group called the Brotherhood of the Spear. Now, the Brotherhood of the Spear was basically the earliest versions of the group that we call the Hand. And the idea was that the Brotherhood of the Spear had basically broken off from traditional Japanese society and sought to basically have their own society that focused on samurai codes and different things like that. But the idea here is that with the Brotherhood of the Spear having been corrupted, it created a civil war within the Spear that ultimately led to the formation of the Hand as we know it. And so the result was that the Hand basically defeated those corrupted members of the Brotherhood of the Spear and then withdrew and basically became this very enigmatic sect operating out of Japan that delves in mysticism and resurrecting the dead and, and so on and so forth. Now, because of the fact that Hydra, as it existed at that point in time, was basically eliminated in World War II, Hydra was reconstituted. But Hydra was reformed to be the antithesis to the Germans insofar as they sought world domination, but considered the Germans to have been nonsensical in how they did it. Originally, the idea was that Baron von Strucker, operating as one of the commanders of Adolf Hitler, had consistently been met with defeat after the defeat uh, at the hand of the invaders. So Captain America, uh, Bucky Barnes, the original human torch Jim Hammond, and name of the Submariner. Because of the fact that Baron von Strucker had been defeated time and time again, Adolf Hitler basically ordered the death of Baron von Strucker. Of course, that was covered in Wolverine Origins issues 19 and 20. The result is that in this same story, Red Skull basically smuggled Baron von Strucker out of Germany, and then Baron von Strucker traveled to Japan, killed the existing leader of Hydra, and took his place. And so following this, in Secret Warriors issues 1 and 2, Hickman and Brian Michael Bendis basically established that over the course of Hydra's existence, as it had been restructured by Baron von Strucker, Hydra had sought the same goal of world domination that the Nazi party did. The difference here is that when Hydra looked at the Nazis, they said, well, the Nazis wanted to eliminate everybody who wasn't considered to be the perfect German. But of what use is world domination if everybody that you have domain over is dead? And so because of that, Hydra began to basically intertwine itself in all facets of society. Now, of course, this was given to us by way of this uh, this kind of cool backup feature, you know, that was designed by Hickman and Bendis to show us the four different sects that Hydra was involved in. The first were their basic, like more or less subsidi or, uh, subsidiary organizations, groups that are closely intertwined with Hydra and have basically adopted the name of Hydra, but exist in three forms. The first is the Secret Empire, the second is them, and the third is AIM. 
Now, them was basically like the inner circle of uh, of, of Hydra. It was more or less um, Baron von Strucker's own personal group that he would basically use in order to dictate the actions of most everybody else in Hydra and the different organizations. So kind of think of it like the, the inner circle of Hydra, so to speak, that immediately surrounded von Strucker. The Secret Empire was an organization designed to draw attention away from Hydra itself. And so the idea here was that where Hydra was immersed in a multitude of different activities, Secret Empire would basically engage in all all these crazy little aspects and these crazy little actions and they would exist for the purpose of basically making a whole bunch of noise and getting the authorities to look at them now of course uh secret empire itself at least in terms of the organization first made its debut in tales to astonish number 81 in 1966 so we're not referencing the secret empire as it exists now by nick spencer that's basically just a recreation of what was already there and a reformation at the hands of captain america of the organization the way it originally existed now advanced idea mechanics is basically the technological arm of Hydra. This is the group that made the first cosmic cube that appeared in Marvel Comics. We never see their faces. They only wear those yellow suits. They're basically the scientists. They're the uh, organization that's routinely tried to take over the world. Now, of course, for those of you guys who are reading all new, all different Marvel right now, Advanced Idea Mechanics was basically bought out by Robert DaCosta and turned into a superhero team, more or less. I mean, it was basically co-opted. Now, of course, the reason for that is because of the fact that AIM and as well as them and Secret Empire had all basically vacated the Hydra landscape following the death of Baron von Strucker. They basically achieved their own independence and they started engaging in their own goals. But their goals were still, for the most part, the same as Hydra in the sense that they sought world domination and the elimination of all different ideologies in terms of freedom and, you know, political assembly and, and different things like that. Now, in addition to these various subsidiary organizations, Hydra also involved itself in international corporations. So there's Typhoon and there's Echidna, but there's also a multitude of others. But this served the purpose of allowing Hydra to basically be involved in the economic landscape of across the world. They could essentially money launder. They could spend their money on different things without anybody asking any questions of what it was that they were involved in. In addition to this, Hydra also began involving itself in different governmental assets. So the US government, the Department of Treasury, different things like that, the Canadian government, the Russian government. Now, all these things basically stemmed out and it allowed Hydra to control different laws that were being passed and different bills that were being proposed to Congress and to the different ruling bodies, or I guess the, the political bodies, uh, lawmaking bodies in terms of these different, uh, different countries. But the biggest achievement of Hydra was basically creating S.H.I.E.L.D. And this was established again, like all this other stuff, in Secret Warriors issues one and two. With regards to Secret Warriors, what Bendis and Hickman basically established here was that in order for Hydra to be able to operate without anybody knowing what it is that they're doing, that they essentially went in and they had their own puppet people inside the, the United Nations. So there were basically members of the United Nations who were working for Hydra. At the time, in the 1960s, when S.H.I.E.L.D. was first formed, it was formed at the behest of those Hydra agents working in the United Nations. And what it would do is it would allow Hydra to send S.H.I.E.L.D. on a multitude of campaigns where they would do things like defeat advanced idea mechanics. They would defeat them. They would defeat Secret Empire time and time again. And with this would basically be looked at by S.H.I.E.L.D. as achievements in continuing to take down the role of Hydra, all the while never realizing that they were controlled by Hydra themselves. And so again, it was a really great ruse and it was a really great way to basically keep the various organizations and intelligence agencies of the world under control. Now, of course, the reason why this is significant is because of the fact that in the realm of Marvel Comics, there are a multitude of organizations that sought world domination and look to implement the same policies that we would consider to be Nazi policies. And that's the issue. Fascism is not inherent to the Nazis. It's not strictly a Nazi concept in the realm of Marvel Comics. There's been, historically, like there's been a ton of different organizations and even villains that have sought to conquer the world and implement fascist policies. For example, Apocalypse, Norman Osborn when he was director of S.H.I.E.L.D., Ultron, Onslaught, Annihilus tried to conquer conquer the universe, Dormammu routinely tries to invade the main Marvel universe. In terms of organizations, you got the Hellfire Club, Children of the Vault, Sons of the Serpent. There are a ton of different groups across Marvel Comics that serve the purpose of trying to conquer the world and implement things like restricting freedom of assembly or restricting people's ability to speak publicly, freedom of speech, different things like that. So again, it's not strictly a Nazi thing to say that Hydra as an organization is the same as the Nazis because there were people who were Nazis and form Hydra is like saying that because Michael Jordan left basketball to go play baseball, that basketball and baseball are the same thing, not by any stretch of the imagination. So anyway, guys, I want to go ahead and just kind of get this video out there, speak some truth to uh, to misinformation. <laughs> but if you guys are new here to Comics Explain, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and I will catch you all later. Peace.